day three of 7-1, and this is the final day of 7-1. Uh, so basically, I've given you the graph of the velocity this time. I have not given you the function, so basically that limits what you can do. Uh, if I were to make this graph, it would be a piecewise function, which would make it very complicated. Uh, but it's saying basically that's how it's moving, so that's the velocity graph. The particle starts at x equaling 5 when time equals 0. Okay. So that's saying in the original, it's starting at 5, right? not necessarily in this graph. Okay. So this is the velocity graph. All right, well, what's our first question then? Determine when the particle was moving right, left, and stopped. Well, it looks like each tick mark is 1. And so if we were going to do this one, it's moving to the right. Um, how about include, does it include one or no? No, I'd say one's right at zero there. And so we're going to go from one to four, not including four. Again, because all of these values here are all positive. So that means it's going to, we're going to consider that the right. Is that the only instance that this is going to the right? Okay, seven to nine as well. And you may put union in there maybe. Then it's moving left. Mm, what does it give us in the original? Yeah, I'd say zero is included then, yep. Zero to one, not included. Union. Commas are fine. I'm just showing you again some stuff maybe you have forgotten from other years. Is that it? No. Oh. Yep, not including four to seven, not included. Is that it for going left? And then stopped. One, four, seven, nine. All right. Yeah, it's, it has stopped there. Yeah. No, the right would be parenthesis because it, at 9 it's actually stopped. So we would not put a bracket on that one for moving to the right. Okay, any questions on that? That's pretty straightforward because that's how we've been doing these is by the graph. right? But the next one is where you might have some trouble. We've been doing these using the calculator because we wanted to find position, and so we took the antiderivative of a function that we knew. We don't have a function. It's a piecewise function. But that'd be a lot of antiderivatives to figure out. But everything I've given you is a line. So determine where the particle is at the end of the trip. Well, where did it, we know it started where, at? No, where did the particle start? Not its velocity. Started at 5, if you look at the initial directions. It says x is 5 when time is 0. So we know it started at 5 something. So we got to figure out where did this thing go? Where did it end up? Any ideas? Well, how do you do that, though? What does antiderivative do? Because that's what we've been doing on these. Antiderivative finds the area from your particular graph to the x-axis. Well, these are areas we can find, aren't they? Yeah, well, here's a triangle. That's not all that hard. We can find that area by ourselves. That's one by one. Divide by two, so that one right there is close. And then I would say there's probably another one right here. That's a positive one half, yeah. So those two technically do cancel. Is this talking about total distance or where did it end up? So those two, do they technically cancel then? 
yeah, so basically, did it? if I just take those two into consideration, did it really go anywhere at that point? No, it went, yeah, it went left a half, and then went back to the right a half, so it basically is where it started, which was, again, at five. How do you do this next one? Maybe we'll do this in, oh, you could do a trapezoid, yes. Just one of your bases happens to be, well, can you do a trapezoid there? Oh, so like that? Oh, well, there you go. So our trapezoid, maybe let's draw it over here. Well, I, I did as best I could with it. So this is what, one? And that is your, because these are right angles, that one is actually your height. How about this one on the left here? Well, that is one. So mine's a little off, but that's because this one here is one, one. That one up there is three, right, three. And how about a trapezoid again? The area is? Okay, base one plus base two. You can do divide by two if you want, but then you also have to take it times the height. Some of you are thinking of the trapezoid rule we use for approximations. Uh, there is no need to approximate here because you can actually make a perfect trapezoid in there. Well, what do you get for that area then? We've got uh, base one is one, base two is three, over two, well that much of it is two times the height of one, so that area in there is two. And if you want to make a list, you can say, okay, so so far we got negative half, and we've got a half, and we've got a two, and keep going like that. The next one is a triangle, that is one by three. Okay, so basically one and a half, everybody agree with that one? Okay, one and a half. Or you could write three halves if you want, but I think one and a half is probably easier. Is it positive or negative? Yeah, positive. It's above both. Yeah. How are we going to divide up this next one here? Yeah, one by one. Yeah. So a negative half for that one. Yeah, we've done that enough, right? Yeah, it was, it was meant to be. I don't know if it came out that way. But yeah, basically, this is supposed to go all the way down if it didn't. So is that trapezoid right there? I just put a blue dot in, the same one I just put a blue dot in there. Yeah. Except it's negative. So that's a negative 2. How about that triangle? Is that one I just put a black dot in, the same one as that one with the black dot? Negative. Yep, right. <laughs> negative one and a half. So we're done with that one. And you could actually do this one all together if you wanted to because the height is one, the base is then two. So the area of that one is one. Could you have done that separately and got a half for each one? Yeah, that's fine. So what do we got here? Well, you already told me that happened. Oh, whoops. That's what was there, right? Cancels off with the, well, kind of cancels off with part of the one, and so you're left with. So that is a negative half, right? Yep. So we're at a half, but this is what? What is that called? displacement, which means how much it moved. So basically, after all of this, whatever we're talking about here, only moved one half to the right. Where did it start again, though? Five. So where did it end up? Five and a half. So all that work to find out that this thing really didn't go all that far from where it started. But did it move quite a bit overall? Yeah, if we're talking total distance, this actually went quite a ways, right? Right, if you are for sure that there is symmetry there, kind of like we had with the trig function the other day, we knew it was symmetry so we could work with that. If you know it is, yeah, it's going to cancel itself out. Okay, but in the end, you're probably going to want to know what that is anyways because of the next question. So it's one of those that you might want to make sure because you know total distance is probably on the way. 
Okay. And so this one does ask determine total distance. So what I would do is just go back to this one. And basically all of those that were negative, just make them positive. Because don't you weren't we just taking the absolute value when we had the notes the other day? So do the same thing here. Just take the absolute value. And so basically we're looking at a half and a half and two and one and a half and a half, two, one and a half, and one. So basically you just add that up, and that's actually total distance traveled. Okay. Which ends up being what? We got nine and a half. Do you have to put the five in with that one then? Do you put the five with that so it's 14 and a half? No, this is just distance traveled. has nothing to do with where I started. I went right, left, all that stuff. So it is for this answer, nine and a half. 